The year is 1981. A lowly game by the name of Haunted House releases for the Atari 2600, becoming the very first documented horror game to date. Written by James Andresen and published by Atari Inc., a haunted house saw a player, who was represented by a pair of eyes, navigating a haunted mansion of the late Zachary Graves to recover three pieces of an urn. Haunted House is identified as being the great-grandfather of survival horror, a genre that had yet to find its bearings in the video game market. As time went on, horror would be revolutionized in the film industry with such titles as The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween, and Friday the 13th. Trying to capitalize off that success, video games would try and replicate the horror genre seen within film with corresponding games, but unfortunately, the technical limitations of the industry at the time restricted the potential for a truly holistic horror game. Instead, we got this. However, in 1989, a game by the name of Sweet Home released from Capcom. Based on the Japanese horror film of the same name, Sweet Home tells the story of a team of five filmmakers exploring an old mansion in search of precious frescoes hidden there. The unsettling soundtrack and use of disturbing imagery miraculously manipulated the player's fears, all within the confines of a JRPG. Now, Sweet Home still isn't a very scary horror game by today's standards, but is the basis for a very important IP that will be essential for horror games in the coming years. But it wasn't until years later when the first truly terrifying horror game would release, a little game by the name of Alone in the Dark. Released in 1992 for the PC, Alone in the Dark is what would now be known as a survival horror game, designed by Frederick Renault and developed and published by Infogrames. Often regarded as the grandfather of survival horror, Alone in the Dark is set in 1920s Louisiana, challenging the player to investigate and escape a haunted mansion, advancing by solving puzzles while either banishing, slaying, or eluding various ghosts and monsters. The player can also collect and use weapons, manage a weight-based inventory system, and explore a partially non-linear map. Alone in the Dark is heavily inspired by the works of H.P. Lovecraft and Edgar Allan Poe, and is quintessential for the 3D survival horror genre, as it all but invented it, being the basis for 3D horror games to come. Then, in 1995, the PlayStation would release to North American audiences to widespread acclaim. Titles like Ridge Racer, Crash Bandicoot, Parappa the Rapper, and Wipeout would help propel the console into subsequent popularity. But the PlayStation was more than just a new console. It was a revolution. 3D graphics were all the rage of generation, meaning that survival horror games were established by Haunted House and Alone in the Dark was ripe for console market. Being inspired by the success seen within Alone in the Dark, Capcom decided to take another stab into horror once again, initially a remake of the aforementioned Sweet Home. But due to licensing issues, the project was reworking through an entirely new IP, that being the world-renowned Resident Evil. Cementing the idea that horror games could be an entirely new genre, Resident Evil surged into popularity due to its eerie atmosphere, hilarious voice acting. Oh, Barry! That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right! And stress inducing gameplay. The player controls Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine, members of the Elite Task Force Stars, who must escape a mansion infested with zombies and other monsters. Revolutionary is the word that should be associated with the first Resident Evil. It's not only did it introduce iconic characters and locations, but it is also responsible for pioneering the survival horror genre into the mainstream, as well as making zombies popular once again. Take for example the third episode of the show Spaced, a British television sitcom created, written, and starring Simon Pegg and Jessica Stevenson, as well as directed by Edgar Wright. The episode sees Simon Pegg's character, Tim, staying up all night on amphetamines playing Resident Evil 2. Tim soon begins to hallucinate zombies and thus beginning a sequence that would inspire one of the best comedies of all time, that being 2004's Shaun of the Dead. Now, Resident Evil isn't the sole reason as to why this movie exists, but it is responsible for making this movie as popular as it was during its time, but enough of that, back to my point. Resident Evil is the father of survival horror, being arguably the most important entry into the entire genre. The way it gave the player a sense of urgency in a relentlessly deadly environment of monsters and madness truly solidifies the game's place as an innovative piece of art. Resident Evil would be followed up by its sequels, Resident Evil 2, 3, Nemesis, and Survivor, all varying in quality but still good in their own right. Also released in 1996 were the games Clock Tower, Overblood, Alone in the Dark, One-Eyed Jack's Revenge, and D. For better or for worse, these games would release under the shadow of Resident Evil's success, falling into that dismal PlayStation 1 obscurity. 
Clock Tower, known in Japan as Clock Tower 2, is a survival horror point-and-click adventure game developed by Human Entertainment. The original Clock Tower was released exclusively in Japan for the Super Famicom one year prior. The story takes place in Norway and follows a variety of characters as they attempt to survive the return of Scissorman and uncover the mystery of his seemingly immortal state. The scenario is encountered and endings vary widely based upon the player's actions. Overblood is a science fiction video game developed by River Hill Soft and published by Electronic Arts for the PlayStation in 1996. It is considered the first survival horror game to make use of a fully three-dimensional virtual environment. Part adventure game and part survival horror, Overblood incorporates elements of fighting, arcade, and puzzle games. The player is able to toggle between first and third person camera angles, both of which are required to solve the in-game puzzles. Alone in the Dark, One-Eyed Jack's Revenge is a sequel to the original that released four years prior. Unlike the first game, the horror theme had been significantly de-emphasized in the sequel, as main villains are mainly gangsters and pirates. Also unlike the first game, it was strictly linear, leaving almost no room for exploration or backtracking. D is a horror-themed interactive movie and adventure game developed by Warp and directed by Kenji Ino. The story follows Laura Harris as she goes to investigate a hospital after learning her father went on a mass murdering spree and barricaded himself inside. The hospital morphs into a castle upon her arrival, which she must explore to find her father. The player controls Laura through computer-generated FMV sequences and must complete the game within two hours without a save or pause function. As companies around the world saw Resident Evil's success, many would throw their lot into the mix, hoping to capitalize off that sweet survival horror fandom. However, if you examine the survival horror genre, you'll notice that it's not built off of gameplay mechanics like most video game genres are. Rather, what makes a survival horror game is its themes and iconography. But this is only one way to describe the genre, as the true definition of survival horror is still not set in stone to this day. Case in point, Parasite Eve. Being inspired by the Parasite Eve novel written by Hideaki Sena, sorry if I butchered that, Squaresoft created an unauthorized sequel of the eclectic book. The story follows an intelligent half-white, half-Japanese New York City police officer named Aya Bree and her struggle against the ancient evil called Eve, threatening humanity, animals, and all of life on Earth. Parasite Eve came to fruition due to Squaresoft's experimental nature during this time, and seeing how Japanese horror was becoming all the rage for this decade, they threw their hat into the mix. Going back to what was stated before, Parasite Eve is an odd example of survival horror, as it plays very differently from the previous titles mentioned. Since it was Square, Parasite Eve had to incorporate some RPG elements, which was odd considering it was a very linear experience, much to people's dismay. However, this is not to discredit Parasite Eve, not in the slightest, the game is still a solid experience front to back and is a great example of the infamous J-horror that was so persistent throughout PlayStation. Once released, Parasite Eve received generally favorable reviews and became a cult classic over time. The game is most obviously compared to Resident Evil thematically, but gameplay-wise is totally different. Parasite Eve would receive a direct sequel in 1999 and another entry in 2011 for the Sony PSP. The years 1998 to 2001 were prolific for the survival horror genre, as well as the PlayStation. More and more companies tried to replicate the success Resident Evil was experiencing with games like Dino Crisis, Echo Knight, Dark Messiah, Coldeca, Galarians, Dark Tales, Juggernaut, Martian Gothic, The Note, Chaos Break, Evil Dead, Hail to the King, Countdown Vampires, and many, many, many more. Now, let's break down some of the most notable games. Dino Crisis is a survival horror game developed and published by Capcom originally for the PlayStation console in 1999 and is the first installment in the Dino Crisis series. The game was developed by the same team behind Capcom's Resident Evil series, which include director Shinji Miyakami, and shares many similarities with it. The story follows Regina, a special operations agent sent with a team to investigate a secluded island research facility. Finding the place overrun with dinosaurs, Regina must fight her way through the facility to discover its secrets and ultimately escape alive with her team. The game is most definitely Capcom's attempt to capitalize off of the dinosaur craze that occurred within the 90s primarily because of the release of Jurassic Park in 1993. 
Poldeka is a role-playing game developed by Sacknoth for the PlayStation. The game was published by SNK in Japan in 1999 and by Infograms internationally in 2000. Set in the haunted Nemeton Monastery in Wales, the plot follows a cast of characters as they uncover Nemeton's secrets and confront monsters created from its dark past. Its gameplay blends exploration and puzzle elements with turn-based battles waged on a grid. Koldeka was created by Hiroki Kikuta, a former employee of Square who formed Sacknoth with other Square staff members in 1997 to develop the game. Galarians is a 1999 survival horror video game developed by Polygon Magic for the PlayStation. The game follows a boy named Ryan, who discovers he has psychic powers. He also has amnesia and is in the process of learning his identity, as he discovers that he is humanity's last hope for the survival against the Galarians, who are genetically enhanced humans. Evil Dead, Hail to the King, is a 2001 survival horror video game developed by Heavy Iron Studios and published by THQ, released for the PlayStation, Dreamcast, and Microsoft Windows. The game also acts as a sequel for the 1992 film Army of Darkness. The game is just a Resident Evil clone that takes many elements from the previous Evil Dead games and is just a hodgepodge of Evil Dead set pieces and iconography. Also, yes, Bruce Campbell voices Ash. However, I would be remiss to not talk about the objectively best survival horror game on the PlayStation, 1999's Silent Hill. This game, which was developed by Team Silent, a group in Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo, is quintessential for many different reasons. First, namely, it is the first installment of the Silent Hill series, a series with an interesting discography of outright stellar games and downright dogwater entries that have led to the series' hiatus since 2014. Silent Hill is also arguably the most mature survival horror game of the PlayStation. The story follows Harry Mason as he searches for his missing adopted daughter in the eponymous fictional town of Silent Hill, inevitably stumbling upon a cult conducting a ritual to revive a deity it worships. Instead of bloody zombies and dinosaurs or edgy protagonists, Silent Hill illustrated horror psychologically, brilliantly using the primitive draw distance of the PlayStation by clouding the entire city in a misty fog fog that has become synonymous with the Silent Hill franchise. Konami's attempt to replicate Resident Evil's acclaim was successful, and to this day, Silent Hill seems inseparable from the horror genre. It was because of the PlayStation's newfound hardware that allowed Resident Evil to set the stage for Silent Hill to exist. This is all subjective, of course, because some may like Resident Evil more than Silent Hill and others may just outright prefer Parasite Eve, but it cannot be understated the cultural impact that Resident Evil, Parasite Eve, and Silent Hill had on the horror genre. Without the PlayStation, these games would have had been significantly reworked, being worse for it. Now, this isn't to undermine the other consoles that were popular at the time, but the PlayStation was more than just a console. It was the first machine to output true horror. And that is why the PlayStation revolutionized horror.